Have you ever wondered how a radio controller transmitter works? Or wanted to build your own? In this video we're going to have a look at this particular radio controller transmitter and see if we can reverse engineer how it works. Let's take a look at the unit. First thing of note, it has an extendable antenna. And this probably means it's not one of the newer radio controllers that uses 2.4 gig. Uh, gigahertz as a transmission frequency because they don't need such a long antenna. If we flip it over on the back we can actually see 27 megahertz written on it and that's good because this oscilloscope over here is a 100 megahertz scope and that means we have a chance to see what's going on. To see what it broadcasts what we're going to do is we're going to take our oscilloscope probe and see what's being transmitted and the way we're going to do that is we're going to attach the ground lead to where the battery ground is like so, and then the other end of our probe I've attached to a crocodile clip and alligator clip at the other end, and I'm going to put that on to the antenna of the, the um, transmitter unit. I'm going to leave it off for the moment, and we'll just see what we're getting on the scope to start with. We can see some sort of signal going on there, and if I increase the size of it, by varying the voltage setting, we can see that we've got a 50 hertz sine wave going on and that's probably just background noise from all of the power in the building. Let's see what happens now when we turn on this unit. Okay, there's definitely something happening. Let me just mess with the time domain. We'll adjust this as well. And we can see that we have 27 megahertz, which lines up with what the sticker says. Now what would happen if we pushed on the controller? Doesn't appear to be much, but let's zoom back out. Something going on there. Aha! Uh -huh. We could see something going on, but it's very hard because, to sort of really tell because we've got this sort of 50 hertz signal that's going up and down and making our trace jump up and down and then upsetting the triggering on the oscilloscope. So what I'm going to do about that is I've built myself a little low pass, sorry, a little high pass filter out of a, a one... Uh, one nanofarad uh, capacitor which is coming up from the the line from the antenna through there and then coming back to the oscilloscope probe and I've got myself a 1k ohm resistor which I'm now going to uh, also hook up to the ground circuit and what that will do is it'll just get rid of the 50 hertz which is in the way and making it very hard to see what's going on so now, when I turn on the transmitter, we get a nice sort of steady signal. And if I move my triggering point here, we should actually be able to stabilize it. And now we can see that it looks like going forward is a bunch of pulses of that 27 megahertz signal. And if I go backwards, we get also pulses but they look a bit wider now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do a single shot and we're going to measure the pulse width of the forward direction and I'm going to do the same for the back direction so this forward direction one we'll just zoom it in a bit now and we can use our Curses for the time, and we'll have one right where the signal goes back up, and then the other one. Let's we'll start here, and it looks like 
our pulses are occurring at about 820 Hertz and the the time period of the whole pulse is about 1.22 milliseconds let's do the same for reverse So these pulses have a frequency of about 306 Hertz and the length or the period is about 3.26 milliseconds. Right, so now let's see what happens when we're going left and right. So we'll do backwards first. So there's backwards. Backwards with a turn one way. And it looks like the pulse width has got, or the, the duty cycle has got longer. And then the other way, and the duty cycle has got smaller. So, that's that one. Now let's do forwards. Similar approach. So we delve into the duty cycles a bit more. I've just done a, just a straight reverse at this point here. Um, and we get out total period of 3.34 milliseconds for one cycle. Now if I use the cursor um, to measure the halfway point, we have about 1.6 milliseconds, which is about half, so it's about a 50-50 duty cycle. Now if we do a turn in one direction, this is the one with a longer duty cycle, and we take a look at that. The shorter distance is about 800 microseconds and and the longer part is about 2.6 milliseconds. So it's kind of about 75% of the cycle on and 25% of the cycle off. If we reverse things up and change the direction so we're going the other way Then we have about maybe 2.2 milliseconds off and maybe 980 microseconds, nearly one millisecond on, which is again maybe about 25% on and 75% off. So what have we learned about this controller unit? Well, we know that it generates a carrier signal with 27.095 megahertz. And then it modulates that signal to tell the truck what to do. It basically sends a set of continuous pulses with different duty cycles. If we want the truck to stop, then we use a 100% duty cycle. If we want it to go straight, then we send our pulses with a 50% on duty cycle. If we want it to turn left, then it sends pulses with a 25% on duty cycle. And if we want it to turn right, then it uh, sends the pulses with a 75% duty cycle. Now you could think of this another way, which is the truck listening to a piece of music. And in this scenario, this means that the carrier signal is a note. So the truck might be listening for A, for example. And if we want the truck to uh, stay stopped, then we play a four beat note repeated one two three four if we want it to go straight then we keep playing a combination of uh, two beats notes with a, a two beat rest if we want it to turn left we play a one beat note with a three beats of rest and if we want it to turn right we play a three beat note with one beat of rest when it comes to the direction forward or backwards then we could think of that as about how fast the song is being played or the tempo so when we play the song fast, for example, at 820 hertz, we're asking the truck to go forward. If we play the song at a slower pace, 306 hertz, for example, then this truck will know it's supposed to be going backwards. So that's kind of a musical analogy of actually 
what's going on and what the truck's listening for and what the transmitter is generating. So a question might be, could I build my own? And the answer is, yeah, you probably could. All you'd really need is something to generate the carrier frequency, and you could do that with a crystal oscillator. That doesn't look too bad, does it? And you'd need something to generate your, uh, your different pulses. And Arduino is more than capable of doing that, so you could do that. Then uh, you need something to sort of mix those two signals together to get the modulation going, and then you probably need to amplify it a bit. Well, you can usually do that with transistors and capacitors and resistors all to, sort of hooked up together. And then finally, you just need an antenna, which could literally be a piece of wire. So what you end up with might be something that doesn't look much more complicated than this mess of wires here. So if you would like to learn how to do this, like and subscribe and check out the other videos.